نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا وأسوتنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحابته ومن تبعه إلى يوم الدين ونسأل الله تعالى أن يغفر لنا ذنوبنا ويكفر عنا سيئاتنا ويتقبل منا ونسأله بعلم نافع ورزق واسع وإليه توكلنا وإليه وإليه المسير ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم قال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت وبارك تعالى إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبعد praise be to Allah we praise him with all the praises we seek his forgiveness guidance and his mercy we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our bad deeds and the bad that's in and inside us. We ask Allah to forgive us, to guide us, to accept from us our deeds purely for His pleasure and His sake. We ask Allah to give us useful knowledge and understanding and give us wide sustenance. To Him we return, to, to Him is our goal. And on him we utterly depend. And there is no power and might except that of Allah. And we send peace and prayers on his final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, to continue with the story, just to clarify a couple of points from last time. Last time I mentioned to you, and we left around the story at the uh, marriage of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Khadija. Bint Khawayyid anha. And I mentioned to you that um, it's a, not a major point, but it's important for her to understand how things are assessed in the field of knowledge and ilm. Some of our brothers listened to this, uh, that part, and, and when I mentioned that actually the 40 years of age has no authenticity. The 40 years of age of Khadija anha, marrying, being at 40, marrying, marrying Rasulullah some of, some of our brothers were absolutely flabbergasted after the talk and said, well, we've never heard this all our lives. And that's not the first time I hear things like that. And why is that we're hearing it first time? It's like taking, let me, excuse me for using the word gospel truth, as though it was the word of God that she was 40 years of age. Why no alim in all these years of listening in TV, radio, masajid, have they ever disagreed or said anything different? They all say 40, and they actually marvel at it, actually. And say perhaps it was some mu'jiza from Allah that she had all these children after 40 years, meaning she even went past menses. And that's not how ulama thought. These are, these are sort of uh, passings on of comments of people who never really check properly these kind of things. It's not a big issue, but it's an issue from an ill point of view. So I don't know why these people who have been passing on the 40 years of age have done it for decades and perhaps more decades than that, and sometimes the lives of the whole of the people in the community have never, never heard anything different. Uh, I can't vouch for them. You have to ask them why they've not checked it. But the reality is that this 40 years of age, and let me repeat again from last time, only comes from one source. And I actually checked many Sirah books, both in English and especially in Arabic, many of them. And I see where some of them don't even mention the age. The others who mention it, you can see the same comment as being cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste, right? They didn't have cut and paste, you know, they just copied it. And they copied it from only one source, which was, I mentioned to you last time, al waqadi in, in Ibn Sa'ad's Tabaqa. That's the only place it's mentioned. So anybody who's taken it has got it only from that source. There is no other place in Quran and Sunnah, authentic hadith, that this is mentioned. It's not a big issue. Again, let me repeat, I'm mentioning it from a, a, a technique and methodological point of view. Right? That's the only source. 
So whoever's mentioning it, it's not because they've got it from 20 other scholars. There's only one source. Waqadi, as I mentioned to you before, and I will repeat it and mention it many times before, is seen as a liar from the point of view of ulama, of knowledge and, th and, th and thabat, those who are firm in knowledge and proper understanding. The other report we had, which I said mentioned 28, is from Ibn Ishaq. It is mentioned by Al-Hakim. Al-Hakim is a muhaddith uh, who wrote the Al-Mustadrak, the supplement to Bukhari Muslim. He mentions it from Ibn Ishaq as being 28. Now, let me say, if I had a choice to listen to Ibn Ishaq's opinion or Al-Waqadi, anybody with any element of knowledge will know which one to rely on more. Ibn Ishaq is seen as Suduq in Hadith. Suduq means he's not Kudja, not, not like Imam Malik, not like Ibn Umar al Nafi, yeah, not like other transmitters, but Suduq means he's truthful, but he makes mistakes as well. But Ibn Ishaq is that level, and then Waqadi is down amongst the liars and Matruks. So whose word am I going to take? Nevertheless, Ibn Ishaq mentions it without a chain. There's no Sanad. So even the 28 is not like this. I'm not saying that to you. I'm saying if I have a choice between the two, I would prefer the 28 seems to fit more with her marrying and having all these children afterwards. As many other ulama said in books of ulama, the arm and public aren't going to know about this. And those who are preachers and imams who don't delve into these things, they're not going to tell you this because they don't, they've never even searched it or heard anything different. So I apologize. I don't apologize, actually. If you want to ask them why they've never mentioned this in your 60 years or 70 years, I remember giving a talk in Ramadan last year, actually in Slough. And the people in Slough who were gathered there, they'll know this, they listen and hear this, that I, it was a talk in Ramadan. And I obviously mentioned various chronic uh, ayat in regard to that and, and lots of hadith. And I mentioned amongst that hadith, which is very famous, passed around from pulpits, from pulpits, from various places. And I mentioned that this hadith is not authentic. It is weak to the extent we shouldn't use it and say, Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi So much so that this hadith isn't even mentioned in the six books. The Seha Sitta as, we, as they are known. A Seha Sitta. And by the way, six books being called the six authentic doesn't mean that all the hadith in those six books are authentic. This is a misconception, and the title of Seha Sitta is actually misleading. The title to call them Seha Sitta is misleading. And many ulama of hadith objected to it. But it was used by fuqaha and ulama just as a matter of convenience. That they're saying that majority perhaps of the hadith in them are authentic. Yeah. But the ex people had exceptions, especially to Ibn Majah. Because many hadith in that are, are weak and actually some fabricated as well. So some excluded Ibn Majah from the Seha Sitta title and put rather in there things like Ad-Darimi's collection or others put Muatta Imam Malik in there. In the Sikh. So that's another debate. But the point is that this hadith, which I mentioned in Slough, wasn't even in these books. It was mentioned in Al-Bayhaqi hundreds of years later and the Muhaddithin said he's not authentic. And this is a famous hadith which says that one in the month of Ramadan, one who does a voluntary deed will be rewarded as though they had done a fard deed. And one who does a fard deed will be rewarded 70 times its reward. Its first part of the month, third, is mercy. Its second third is maghfirah. And the last third is being saved from the fire. Who has heard of this hadith? <laughs> most people. I'm surprised if nobody, uh, if there's anybody who hasn't heard this hadith. Because it's the most popular one actually among the ahadith. It is very weak. It is not acceptable to say, Qala Rasulullah. So when I mentioned this, of course, the talk was about a whole lot of other things. I just mentioned it. One elderly man, 70, and I felt sorry for him. He stood up and he was really angry. It seems he missed everything else I said, but he couldn't stand the fact that I've made this week hadith week. He said, brother, you know, you come up, you know, wherever you... I've been listening to ulama and alims from, you know, from the country I came from to this and the pulpit here, scholars of all background source who have been mentioning this. And who are you to come here and tell us suddenly? I said, well, what can I do? I'm not the first one to say it. But if you, 
If you go to the people of knowledge, it's in the books from centuries ago that it's weak. I haven't made it weak today. <laughs> so how can, I, how can I answer you? Ask them why they're not telling you. So, uh, so I mention this because this again, although this issue of the age of Khadija is not such a big issue, but it's the same kind of comment I got about, you know, how come you're the only one? I'm not the only one. But you need to be, uh, it's, it's whether people, and that's, of course, public I don't blame because we don't, public isn't expected to delve into the sources and, and check and recheck and look at that. They don't have the ability unless you learn the ulum that ulama use and, 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 and many, many a'imma and preachers, even those who've gone to Darul Ulum and seven years and ten years, they have not delved into, I guarantee it for you. They've done a lot of rote learning and often in the madhab, yeah, of opinions, but not actually gone into analysis and critique. That's a different area. So there's imams and there's imams. There's fuqaha and then there's fuqaha. You understand what I mean when I say that in English? Yeah, there's ulama and there's ulama. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm not saying I'm one of the, the ulama. I'm just saying that this is the thing to do with research and going into things in, in a deeper way to discover and realize. Now, so the second thing is uh, Masood raised about hadith, and I want to mention it because I looked at the, you said you saw the hadith. This was Rasulullah Sallallahu saying, I desired in the time of Jahiliyyah when I was a young man to, uh, to go and partake or what young people, because he was young looking after the sheep and goats. And this is the hadith. I have it word for word in Arabic. And you need to look at the Arabic sources because translations can often be misleading. And the Prophet said, and after that I was prevented from doing that. What was he prevented from? The hadith carries on. He said, one evening I asked one of my colleagues to look after the sheep and who, which I was grazing. So because I wanted to go and join and had a desire to partake of the leisure time, he mentions it like that, of what the young youth were doing in Mecca. So as I approached Mecca in the first, the, to the first houses of Mecca, I heard the sound of drums, and he mentions, and flutes. Mizmar and Dufuth or Harabir, which is another kind of drum. Then he mentions Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He doesn't say it, then he fainted or fell asleep. He goes, so I, he mentions, I amused myself, and in one report, a same authentic, same as he says, I sat down and listened. Jalastu wa sami'atu. I sat down and listened to the drums and the music. Right? Then I fell asleep. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I woke up to, with the sun on my face. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But before that, actually, he, when he arrives and sees the music, etc., he asks the people there, you know, what's going on? They said, so-and-so is getting married to so-and-so. The marriage is taking place. So he's part of a marriage ceremony and music is being played. But other things happen in those marriage ceremonies we know from Jahiliyyah. So this part, he says, I sit and listen. Yeah, he says it from his own words. He said, then it happens another time. He comes back another day. Same thing happens. Another wedding. He listens again to the drums and the music. And then he falls asleep after that. So then when he comes back, what's interesting is his companion in the same hadith asks him, uh, so what did you do? The Prophet said, I did nothing. I did nothing. Some claim that, that uh, it means he didn't listen to music and, uh, 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 and the drums. If the Prophet ﷺ said, I did nothing, he cannot mean I did not listen to the music and drums. Otherwise, he would be now the Billah lying. True? Look at what the Hadith is saying. Jalastu wa sami'atu. How can then he say to his companion, I didn't do anything? When he's saying from his own words, ﷺ, I sat down and I listened. What he's saying, I didn't do anything, is what happened beyond that. What happened beyond that? which is boozing, adultery, all kinds of things were going on in those kind of occasions with young people. You think it's just new now? It was going on then as well. So when he says, I didn't do anything, he means he didn't partake of the rest of what took place. And remember, Ulama is saying he's being saved from Kaba'ir. 
Yeah. So Kabair is in that. So that's just to clarify. Those are the actual words of the Hadith. Yeah. When you check them, you, you, then you do analysis of what's actually being said. Uh, and then you critique what somebody else's conclusion is. Yeah. Anyway, that's a different story. Coming back to the seerah. Now, Rasulullah as we said, marriage Khadija radiallahu anha. We know from the reports, without the details, that the Prophet Sallallahu did some trade business. He's already involved not just in grazing, but trade businesses as well. Around his uh, 20s now. Some reports mention that one of the trade journeys he did was for Khadija radiallahu anha. And now this trade journey was to Busra again. Remember we heard Busra? Towards Sham, not Basra in Iraq. Yeah? And he comes to sit under a tree. Hey, oh, here we go again with a similar story to Bahira. <laughs> now he comes and sits under a tree and somebody called... Nestor, the monk called Nestor is there. And Mesara, who's the young man sent by Khalidah Radana in this story to accompany Rasulullah, is asked by Nestor, the monk, who is that man sitting under that tree? When he tells him, who and so and so, so and so, he says, because only, only prophets sit under that tree. This story has no basis again, just like the story of Bahira, we said. Okay? Yeah. Some say Nestor is the same monk. Others say Bahira had died and Nestor. Nestor, like Bahira, is a type of monk. It's not necessarily the name. Nestorians were type of uh, Christians who lived in that uh, area. And an order of monks, you could say. Yeah. But again, I'm mentioning it for completeness because you read about it in some books. In others, it's not even mentioned. Yeah, but it doesn't have any basis at all. There's no son that's authentic to it at all. And we don't need to... We don't need authenticity or proclamation of Rasulullah from Nestor or Bahira. We don't. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anyway, so some of these reports say, so Maysara comes back and says to Khadija, oh, you don't know about this Muhammad. So-and-so said this about him. And there were angels uh, uh, sh uh, shadowing over him and things like that. And then the story weaved further. So she's obviously um, impressed, not just... She, <laughs> So it's the weave, weaving of the story carries on then. Oh, she's impressed because this man's not like any, so I want to marry him. But actually, the reality is, the reality is, nobody knew about his Nabuwa. I said to you before, all the evidence is against that. Yeah? All the evidence is against that. Against that. If he knew and Khadija knew, then the rest of the story, when they come to in a minute, when Wahi comes, would not be that kind of behavior that we saw, would it? Those of you know the story already. Anyway. The fact is what we have, the Prophet has already been established as a Amin, trustworthy. He was well known for that and his trade uh, business, etc. What we know of truthfulness is Khadija Radiallahu Anha proposed to him and he married her, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Radiallahu Anha uh, uh, at that time. And the Prophet Sallallahu we should know that while Khadija Radiallahu Anha was alive, right up until the... Uh, uh, approximately, and we'll come to it, uh, just a few years before the Hijra, when uh, Khadija Tadala passed away, that that was his only wife. It was only after that that the other wives. And on the issue of wives, I'll take a separate session on that. Who were his wives, when he married them, etc. And all the background to that will require a separate session, including the marriage to two Aisha which causes so much controversy and, because, and makes some Muslims so apologetic they're almost crying and, uh, you know, as though the Prophet says, now the Billah, who doesn't need your... Anyway, we'll, we'll look at that another time, not today. So, from the Prophet says, all the children that I said to you last time are from Khadid al except one Ibrahim who was from Maria al Kopti, which comes later on in Medina. Now, the Prophet says, it is uh, after marriage, uh, also, we have the issue of the building of rebuilding of the Kaaba. The Kaaba, it is said in reports that it had no roof, it had become damaged, etc. So the Quraysh decided to uh, uh, rebuild from the foundation and to strengthen it, etc., and put a roof on it. And some reports mentioned that while they were doing it, they ran out of material and therefore they left the hijr out. Allahu alam what the truth is. There's no strong chain for having that sort of thing. But what we know for sure is the Prophet. Was involved in this situation, probably in his mid 30s or somewhere, as he's getting closer towards the time of Nabuwa, that they ran into dispute, the leaders of the Quraysh. 
amongst the Walid ibn Mughayra and, and uh, uh, others, Harb and Abu Jahl, all the, the kind of leadership that are around. They're running to dispute amongst the tribes. Why? Because who's going to replace the black stone in its place? And nearly ended up having blows and a fight over it until somebody suggested what we'll do is we'll wait and see the next morning who the first person is who comes into the haram. Yeah, and we'll ask them to arbitrate and decide for us. And lo and behold, the person who arrived, of course, as Allah willed it, was Muhammad Rasulullah. And as he walked in, it seems that he was already known as Al Amin. Some people, some historians and what ulama say, he became, became known as Al Amin after that. Others say, no, he was actually Al Amin before that. It wasn't just that incident. People used to keep their money. We have that evidence from authentic hadith. They're not just when he became profit, they used to keep, it was like a local bank, didn't charge interest of course when I say bank, so I use it carefully when I say bank. They used to keep their possessions, yeah, as a man, he used to keep it for them and return them when they needed them. He was well known for that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah, not after profit, but even before that. So he's a man and being al-Amin was well established. This established it further actually, because they said, oh, it's al-Amin. So we, Allah sent us, God sent us this, we must, we'll get justice. So the Prophet ﷺ told them how to resolve it, is all of them grab a big sheet and all of them carry different sides of the sheet to represent all the different tribes that were arguing over it. Yeah, and the Prophet ﷺ placed the black stone himself. <laughs> yeah, and then removed it and put it in the place where it should be, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And everybody was happy with this, uh, with this issue. This, um, now, we come to the, um, towards the time of Nubuwa, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a very special time. And Nubuwa, well, we're talking about now, it is established, it's an authentic tradition that he was 40 years of age sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he became a prophet and a messenger. A prophet and a messenger. And therefore that takes us, if his birth is 571, it takes us to the year 610, not 611, 610, as I explained to you before, when we look at the, 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 the solar calendar, yeah, you've lost a year from the lunar calendar, so he's 40 in lunar calendar terms, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so when he was 40 years of age. Um, we have authentic report in Bukhari that before this, sometime before this, not exactly how, but some, some years as he was growing towards 40, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned later that that rock there used to say Islam to me. He's one of the mu'jizah. The Prophet ﷺ says in authentic hadith, there's a rock in Mecca that used to say Salaam to him. He never understood it before Nabuwa, you see. But the rock used to say it. In Tirmidhi it mentions that a tree used to say it as well. Yeah, but Tirmidhi's report is not authentic, but Bukhari mentions it. It's an authentic report. The Prophet ﷺ there, a rock used to say Salaam to me. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions in authentic hadith, in these are in Bukhari Muslim, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for some time, and it seems not exact, but again a couple of years perhaps before, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam began to having a vivid dreams like breaking daylight. Yeah. Vivid dreams. Doesn't say what the content of the dreams were. Yeah? But things started happening to him near that time, which, I mean, subhanAllah, Vivid dreams, uh, 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 a rock saying salam, and he started also, as Aisha Dalana mentions, uh, started retreating to the cave of Hira on Mount Hira. He used to go, he used to go for some, some days and nights, take the provisions, and he started to retreat there and, and doing tahannuf. And Aisha Dalana was asked, What's tahannuf? He said, I asked Rasulullah, so he said, Ta'abud. Ta'handus means meditation. Ta'abud means worship. We have no details of what kind of worship it was because he hasn't got salah yet sent, being sent down. He hasn't got communication from Allah. He hasn't got communication. But it's like, a, it's, you can see it from the story of Ibrahim. It's, it's searching. We know his opinions in regards to idol worship, which was in agreement with the opinions of others like him. Ahnaf. Are, uh, the names who I've mentioned to you before, though who, those who rejected idolatry. Yeah. So the Prophet some searching, 
Yeah, but he's different from the others, of course. Because Allah SWT is choosing him. So he's meditating and searching. Searching Allah for the truth. Because, of course, uh, as Allah SWT says, مَا كُنْتَ تَدْرِي مَا الْكِتَابُ وَلَا الْإِيمَانِ Allah SWT says in the Quran, you didn't know what scripture was or what iman was. He's talking, مَا كُنْتَ in the singular, to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Allah is talking. وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًا فَهَدَى That's in Surah Al-Duha. Surah Al-Duha is mostly referring to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah? We found you, um, I, we don't say misguided. We find, find you looking, searching. Yeah? So ضَالًا here doesn't mean misguided. ضَالًا here means uh, 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 it's out of out of respect we don't use that word yeah we, we use the word that he's searching and he doesn't know doesn't know what's right mustaqim yeah and this is again an evidence that guidance from Allah is required for human beings to be judged by Allah they are not left to their fitra to find the truth and be judged on that as some of the Muqtazila sects said centuries ago they said, oh, we should be alive. Some people have got this idea even today that out of our own, Allah's put fitra and truth in, so we should be able to find it. We're going to be punished if we don't. No. This is against the Quran. Because Allah SWT says in, in the Quran, وَمَا كُنَّا مُؤَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا And surely we do not punish anyone until we send a messenger. Which means until the message is received. And actually kufr, actually kufr is to reject when the message comes and... Further to that, what's the other condition? You understand it. Understand it. You realize that this is the truth. You don't get a twisted message. You get a clear message. You understand and you reject. That's called kufr. That is the meaning of kufr. Now, a messenger bringing a message, yes, is not the same as you and me taking a message to someone, is it? Let's be very clear about it. Some people get, uh, you know, worked up. Oh, look, internet, social, everything's around for people to find the truth. I mean, look, we Muslims are confused with what's on social media about Islam, are we not? Shias and, uh, and weirdos claim, lesbians and homosexuals claiming to be Muslims, saying this is halal, this is allowed, I'm allowed to do what I want, yet I'm Muslim. There's all sorts out there confusing Muslims. So what do you think non-Muslims are seeing as a message of Islam? Do you think they're getting it like Allah saying, وَمَا كُنَّا مُؤَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبَعَتْ رَسُولًا And we do not punish the people until we send a messenger. That's not a messenger coming. <laughs> That's confusion and chaos coming, yeah? You can blame the media, you can blame anybody. But the reality is, did they get the message? That's why we say, in my opinion is firm in that, that don't judge other people as kuffar just come out with a word like, word like that. Because you don't know. You don't know. Why I say understanding? Because even any human being is exempt as soon as they, let, they lose their ability to comprehend their aql. They are called ghayr mukallaf. They are not responsible. They're not answerable anymore. Somebody with a low IQ, somebody who becomes senile, somebody who is majnoon, are they answerable? Absolutely not in this deen. So therefore, somebody who hasn't understood it, that's what it's linked with. I understand and I get the clear message and I reject when I realize this is the truth. That's how the, uh, uh, the kuffara actually described. Yeah? Very important message to understand. And so much so that the message is needed for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He didn't bring it from himself. Do we say that? Anybody who says, in fact, Mustafa Shrikeen say that. The Orientalists, this is what they say. He concocted it himself. Yeah? Others helped him. Or he dreamt it up in one of his fits that he was having. Now the Billah bin Zalik. We don't say that. We don't say that. Absolutely not. So... Uh, Prophet was uh, withdrawing and, and, and in this state of ta'abbud, etc. Um, and, you know, the coming of Rasulullah it's interesting. Because Allah SWT says in the Quran, and makes it clear, first evidence we have is the Quran itself. That it has been mentioned in the previous scriptures, which means in the Old and New Testament, they already knew about him coming. And when Quran is being revealed, if Allah says it's there, 
it means it was there even at the time of Rasulullah in the scripture, but yeah, but in, they started removing things. And do you think removing has not been taking place? It's been taken. <laughs> they took the, they rejected books, committees of, uh, of Christian uh, leadership sat down and said, we'll take this one and we will we'll reject this one. Yeah. And then we'll change it. Don't you think? And they changed from Aramaic to the chain that took place from Aramaic to Greek and then Greek to other language. So much has been changed by the hands of others. Yeah. Who knew? Who knew? Allah SWT says in the Quran, Surah Al Araf, those who follow the messenger. In this ayah, Allah SWT calls him the messenger and the prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he's both. Yattabi'una Rasul and Nabi al Ummi, the unlettered prophet. Ummi couldn't read or write. Some people try to argue, oh yeah, he could read and write. And some apologetic Muslims also try to try to take a, a move away from the meaning because they, they wrongly thought this is an insult to Rasulullah. It is not an insult. It is a part of his mu'jizah. It's a part of the miracle that one who couldn't read and write, look what he came with. Yeah? The, the people of language and the poets and those who were educated in the top level of Arabic, they couldn't, they couldn't fathom this amazing Quran that he came with. So this is not an insult to Rasulullah it is a part of his mu'jiza that he could not read and write and there's many many evidences to him being uh, anyway Allah SWT carries on in the ayah the unlettered prophet yajiduna maktuban indahum fit tawrati wal injil who they, fa uh, they find this unlettered prophet who they find written down with them. Talking about Ahlul Kitab, the Jews and the Christians. Where? Written down. Maktuban in the Torah, in the Torah, in the Injil. What did he come to do? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam To command that which is right and good Yes And forbid that which is evil and wrong And to make halal uh, For them all that which is good And to make haram for them All that which is filthy Khaba'ith, khabith وَيَدَعُ and this is specifically talking to the people of the book and to remove from them yeah, uh, the burdens and the, the, the aglal which is like chokes around the necks that they used to have for slaves to remove that, remove the shackles from them and the difficulty for, from them uh, which meaning the rabbis and others had put on them you can't do this, you can't do that so it also shows you Deen of Islam is actually much more relaxed. Yeah. As Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, yeah, let the Jews see in this deen is fusha, wideness in this deen. We're not just about uh, uh, ritual, ritual, ritual. There's wideness in this deen. There's room for relaxing in this deen. Yeah. Not about becoming monks. There's marriage in this deen. There's trade in this deen. There's making profit in this deen. There's having children. There's enjoyment in this deen. Subhanallah, this is the deen of balance. So this is also the meaning here. But notice about written with them. Quran saying that. Not so authentic hadith. Quran saying that. Yeah. And despite, so we believe it was written down. Despite all the changes and rubbing out and uh, obliterating the word, we believe he was mentioned there. It's still there actually. It's still there from Genesis which quotes Jacob gathering the people and saying, keep Allah's contract as it were. Uh, and the scepter, meaning the, the promise of Allah, of Nubuwa in the household of Bani Israel. Remember Bani uh, Israel is Yaqub al-Islam. From the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said it himself, do you know who Israel was? 
Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, we don't know. He said it was Yaqub alayhi salam. He was known Israel. So he's gathering and saying the scepter, meaning the promise of Allah of sending the buwa, will not move from the Bani Israel, from the house, from my children, until, until the Shiloh comes. The Shiloh comes. In other words, there will be a time when someone else will come. And pe all people, all people will gather to him. It will be shifted. That's Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And we find in Deuteronomy 18, 18, famous verse. If you want to go into details, listen to the likes of uh, Zakir Naik and Ahmadita rahimahullah. Yeah, for their, 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 that's their expertise. I don't necessarily recommend you listen to everything that they say, but that is their expertise, definitely. Uh, and uh, they'll tell you off by heart exactly where the verses are uh, and what they mean. And this Deuteronomy is words of Musa alayhi salam. That Allah SWT, God's saying that I was sent unto them from your brethren. Brethren means not from you, but from your brethren. And the brethren of the Hebrews and the Bani Israel, the Arabs. Yeah? See, Mike, when we talk about anti Semitic, Arabs can't be anti Semitic, they're Semitic themselves. <laughs> they'll be insulting themselves. So they're the brethren. Yeah? Uh, someone like unto thee like Musa alayhi salam, who will speak to them, not from himself, yeah, but what, what Allah is saying, what we reveal, he'll, he will not speak from himself, except that which we make him speak from his mouth, as the Quran says. He doesn't speak from himself. It is only, uh, uh, it is only wahi, or uh, revelation, that is uh, revealed to him that he's speaking. <laughs> and then, of course, also there's big debate uh, even in the New Testament about the, the paraclete who will come. Yeah? That Jesus, Isa al Islam, says that when, when he's leaving, yeah, he's giving the good news of the paraclete coming. And there's big debate on who the paraclete is, and also the idea that a different word was used, somebody replaced it, that it was more clearer about Rasulullah. This issue of, uh, of the Gospel of Barnabas, when I mentioned about Gospels being displayed here and there, to be honest with you, the Gospel of Barnab Barnabas is a big question mark. Yeah. Even amongst the ulama of uh, Islam, who question, uh, is certainly questioned by the Christians, obviously, whether it's been concocted actually by a Muslim. Yeah. So I wouldn't rely on this idea of the Gospel of Barnabas. Yeah. There's nothing scholarly that, fun that cements this and says, this is definitely one of the Gospels of the Christians which they threw out. We have nothing firm on that. And we don't need it. Allah SWT also says, it says from the mouth of uh, 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 Rasul uh, Isa alayhi salam, Allah SWT says, Surah Saf, Allah SWT says, وَإِذْ قَالَ عِي سَبْنُ مَرْيَمْ And when, remember when Isa, the son of Mary said, يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ مصدق لما بين يدي من التورات ومبشرا برسول يأتي من بعد اسمه أحمد. This is the Quran. So we believe Isa al Islam warned his people that this, this person is going to come. Quran's telling us. It's not from Hadith. Remember when Isa, son of Mary, Jesus, son of Mary, said to his people, O oh, children of Israel, Ya Bani Israel, I am surely sent as a messenger to you to confirm that came in the Torah. Not with a new mission, not with Christianity, just to confirm what came in the Torah. Bani Israel again. And to give you, a, I'm a giver of glad tidings. To give you a glad tidings of a messenger who's to come after me. And his name is the praiseworthy Ahmad. Kama qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ana Muhammad wa ana Ahmad. In authentic hadith, I mentioned to you before. I am Muhammad and I am Ahmad. And I am Al-Aqib and I am, I am the one. Al-Aqib meaning like the heel. There's no la nabiyya ba'di. Nobody's coming after me. Ahmadi yourself. Yeah. Ahmadi is miss misuse that we say. Ahmed is even misused. Well, this one is actually against them. 
How many don't use, mis uh, use this? They ignore this. They try and use uh, the seal of the Prophet not to mean Khatim uh, Nabi. They say seal means just like a seal, doesn't mean it's the end. This hadith actually says, Alam Aqib, there is no Prophet after me. So many hadith that came like that, Ahmadis tried to ignore them or reject them on no basis except Hawa of desire. But we don't say all Ahmadis because there's sex in Ahmadis as well. There are those who don't see Mirza Ghulam as a prophet, by the way. They saw him as a mujaddid. They accept the finality of Rasulullah. So there are groups amongst them, so don't throw them all in the same bin. Be careful. Be careful doing takfir of people anyway, yeah, until you have clear knowledge of what they're saying. Or sometimes people do words of kufr, but they haven't denounced la ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah. So be careful, you can say this is kufr, yeah, but you don't necessarily say he, is, he or she is kafir, because they may be jahil, they may be ignorant, they may have other reasons that's not been clarified, and when it's clarified, they accept the reality. So be careful, the difference between words of kufr and kafir themselves. Uh, so, like this ayah mentioned, and also we have two other stories from authentic hadith. One is that the Ansar said when they accepted Rasulullah, and this is authentic, they said, We already knew about the coming of a messenger. The Ansar, Aus and Khazraj in Medina, they're Mushrikeen, aren't they? So, how did they know? How do they know? The Jews. The Yehud in Medina used to tell them there's a prophet coming, you know, and when they used to have disputes with them, and that prophet, he's going to be taking sides with it, and we're going to destroy and, or, or, you know, overcome you when he comes. And he's coming soon. Notice, he's coming soon. Right? So the Ansar said, of course, when they realize, and the first time, and you'll see in the story later on, when they come and they hear of the Prophet, one of the things they said to them when they're discussing it, hey, listen, that's what they keep going on about. These lot. Let us be first to go and meet him. Yeah, and if it's true, let's accept him. Yeah. So they've got a competition with the Yahoo. They're saying, well, they're the ones telling us all the time, so let's go and find out. Yeah. So that's one of the, of course, Allah guides them, there's no doubt, it, was, it wasn't just this motive of dunya. But sometimes dunya motive drives to take the initial steps, doesn't it? Yeah. You come with a different motive, but if you're sincere, Allah guides you to the truth. And then the motive disappears when you realize this is the messenger of Allah. Ya Allah, we are, we'll give you our lives, our possessions, we'll die for you, Ya Rasulullah. So that, that's when it disappears, the motive of we'll have one over the Jews, doesn't it? That attitude is totally changed now after Iman comes. Okay? So this is authentic what they were saying. And they're saying, and, and Quran confirms it. Where? In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah SWT says, um, وَكَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ يَسْتَفْتِحُونَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ مَا عَرَفُوا كَفَرُوا بِهِ فَلَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ In this side Allah SWT says and when وَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ كِتَابٌ مِنْ When a book, when the book, the Quran came to them from Allah, confirming that came to them before. Torah and Injil. And he's talking especially about the Yehud of, uh, of Medina now. Uh, and before this, what did they used to do? They used to say that we're going to have victory over you when he comes. They say to the Ansar, يَسْتَفْتِحُونَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ مَا عَرَفُوا كَفَرُوا بِهِ and, فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ And when he came, they recognized him. Remember what I said earlier? 
you realize this is the messenger of Allah, you realize this is the truth, and you reject it. What did Quran say? Yeah. Then he came with what they recognized. They knew. Ma'arafu. Allah saying it. Don't you think Allah knows the inside of their minds and hearts? And He's saying it. They knew. Ma'arafu. Kefaru bi. They rejected with what He brought. They realized this is the truth. Realized this is the messenger. Kefaru. Another Quran says they knew Him like they know their own children, doesn't it? One of the Quranic ayat I haven't quoted here. Yeah. They recognize Him like that. Kefaru bi. Falaknatullahi ala al kafirin. While when they reject, now Allah is saying the latna curse of Allah on those who are rejecters of the knowing, you reject. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the other thing that confirms is another story, which is a children's story. And actually, you'll be glad to know this one is authentic. Amongst all the things I say is not authentic, not authentic, not authentic. And I will carry on saying it. And you're not going to be happy of all the nice stories that you know about that are not authentic. But here's one that is authentic, and that's the story of Salman al Farisi. Salman al Farisi uh, uh, was actually, even though he's Farisi, it seems his origins was from the Persians, but he actually was living amongst the Eastern, Europe, uh, Eastern Romans. He was with Christians. Yeah. And his story, which is authentic, mentions that his monk came to the deathbed and he asked him advice. He said to the monk, obviously he was following a Christian monk. He said, well, you're going now. Who do you want me to go and follow? So the monk said to Salman, I don't really know of anybody of who I can recommend to you, but I know this much. Yeah, perhaps you want to take this advice that in the Haram, there is going to be a prophet coming very soon. And he's going to move from that place to another place. He described Medina. He's going to do Hijrah. So he told him where he's going to be. Yeah. Perhaps you want to go and search for him. So on this basis, this is a Christian saying it. What does the Quran say? It's in their scriptures already. You see, some recognize this. Some are waiting and recognize who he is, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who came with the truth. Don't just come out plucked out of air. The evidence is there as well and was there, brothers and sisters, for those who are truthful, for those who are honest in here, who want to find and know, and they're the ones who came to Rasulullah and accepted him. And those who came after as well, who saw, saw that he was a messenger of Allah. Um, um, so... Salman says he travels for that reason. He goes to Medina. He says, I'll give, you, I'll give you three clues which will clarify to you he's a messenger of God. One. What were they? What were the three? He said, well, my gift, I'm going to do and say to the Sadaqah and have a seal of Prophet Muhammad and show you. He doesn't give, yeah, he doesn't take from charity. He'll take as a gift. He'll eat from a, a gift, not from charity. And he has a seal on his shoulder. So now the story goes how Salman comes to Medina, Rasulullah Sallam already in Medina, and he's trying to look at the back of Rasulullah Sallam to find the seal. Yeah? And this seal is just described in other hadith as just a, a bubble of skin, hard and thick and skin on his shoulder. It does, it's not a seal where it says Muhammad Rasulullah, by the way, that some people think. Yeah, that was on his ring. Yeah, on his ring. Not here, it doesn't say. The seal here means there was a sign. Yeah, this is one of the signs of those who knew of his Nabuwa. Uh, uh, and, and then he says, uh, like the brother said. So Salman came and first he found a seal, then he wanted to test him. So he gave him something. Yeah, and he said, this is a charity for you. And the Prophet Sallallahu refused to eat from it and gave it to others. Then he said, this is a gift. And he noticed he ate from that. These things which were given to him, advice from the Christian monk, he accepted Rasulullah as a messenger of God. So, so this is in the background yeah, to the coming of Rasulullah. And the report then, which is authentic, that on one of these occasions when the Prophet uh, went to the cave to withdraw to meditate, the report which mentions from Ibn Ishaq and Ibn Hisham 
ulama of hadith and fuqaha say, which says he was asleep, is not authentic. It is not authentic that Gabriel came to him in his sleep. Sorry, no, it's not. It's the other way. He was awake and Jibreel came to him suddenly upon him. Yeah, suddenly, baghtatan, suddenly. So he's shocked. Yeah. And in this situation, we say Jibreel came in the form of a man. As the Prophet ﷺ said, he saw J uh, Jibreel on two occasions on his original form. This is not one of them. Yeah. It's a little after this. Yeah. Uh, and of course on the Mi'raj. This, we, uh, from that statement, we, re we see that he came in the form of a man. It was frightening enough that he suddenly appeared in the form of a man. And the story says, Jibreel said, Ikra, the Prophet Sassam, narrating himself. And he said, I said, Ma ana I am not a reader. You know, all sorts of ideas are given by ulama to try and understand this, what's going on, and why Prophet Sassam might ana Because there's no mention of hadith that he showed him a parchment and said, read from this. And the Prophet saying, I'm not a reader. So others said, he must have said recite, because no, no parchment's mentioned. But if he said recite with the meaning, then the Prophet Sallallahu wouldn't have responded, Ma'ana Bikari, would he? What do you think? Does it fit? He's saying recite without any reading. Prophet is saying, I'm not a reader, meaning I don't read and write, Ma'ana Bikari. So either, there has to be a parchment, or there's another conclusion. So I thought about this for years. My conclusion in the past was that possibly there was a parchment. There's no need to mention it. That's why the Prophet said, I can't read this. What I believe now is that Jibreel, there's no need to go in on to this. Jibreel is saying Ikra because he wants him to recite the ayats from the beginning of the surah of Alaq. The Prophet says, understand when he says Ikra, that he's going to say, read something. So he says, Ma'ana Bikari. Prophet Sassam doesn't know he's going to carry on reciting some verses from the Quran for him to repeat until he does it after that. You understand? So while Jibreel is mentioning the first word of the first revelation, the Prophet Sassam is seeing him saying, read. He's saying, I can't read. But he's saying what the Quran is just saying. Yeah, Because you see what happens after that. Yeah. And not because of the... Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and I said, Ma'ana that he took a hold of me. Yeah? And he pressed me so hard, I felt as though all my life was going to drain from me. And he let me go and said a second time, Iqra. My response again, Ma'ana Bikari, I'm not a reader. I can't read. Second time does the same. Third time does the same. Now Jibreel doesn't stop and say, Iqra. And by the way, now you can read this. He didn't say that. He just says, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq khalaq al-insana min alaq Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram alladhi allama bil-qalam allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam The Prophet remembers this. He remembers this. He don't remember reading it. He remembers it from the recitation of it. So what Jibreel is doing is re now reciting what is going to be uh, revealed. And all the revelations take, takes place, not with parchments coming to Rasulullah to read, but Jibreel coming, isn't it? So that's the best understanding to take from it, uh, of uh, Ma'an Abi Qari, why he said, I'm not a reader. So when this happens, the hadith when the Prophet is shaking and trembling. He's shaking and trembling. And he runs away from the cave and runs back to Khadija radiallahu anha. And says, Zammiluni, Zammiluni. Cover me up, cover me up. And he's shaking and trembling. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's not, you know, to counter the idea that uh, he already knows about all these ideas of Nububwa and our signs coming up. Uh, he knew that the rock, the rock saying Islam to him, he can't understand it. He'll understand it afterwards. Yeah? But all the other false stories, we don't need them. And others who claim he was a, 
uh, a prophet, and he, people actually claim he knew about it with prophet before as well, before the Nabuwa. All the evidence is totally against that. He didn't know. So much so, and this is a beautiful story, because here's Rasulullah Sallallahu This is a man in male chauvinist, not just Arabia, male chauvinist world. You follow me? Male chauvinist world. Male chauvinist West until the last 60, 70 years, even recognizing rights of women. And now they want to try to teach us. But we've got issues anyway. That's beside the point. Not that they need to teach us. We've got issues to resolve to go back to the Nubuwa of Rasulullah. This man of 40, 40 is also significant in the Arabs. Why Allah SWT and his wisdom, I don't know for sure, but something from the culture we can learn that in Arab culture at the time, Young person, Shab, is anybody under 40 years of age? So I was going to say I'm still young, but I'm not under 40 <laughs> now. I could say that a few years ago when I did the casino, but I'm afraid I can't say that anymore. Um, but after 40, they become Rajul. Rajul, a man. Okay? So elders in the community, they don't listen to people in their 30s. They are a young man, get, go away. Who are you? What do you know? Rajul, they just about tolerate. Sheikh, when they get to 60, you know, they say, ah, oh, well, okay, give us some of your wisdom now. The sheikh came from applying to sheikh of scholarship, even for young people, came from the idea of wisdom and knowledge. Yeah, 60 plus, etc. Yeah. So those are the kind of people. So even Rajul, they had a problem with young, you know, man coming to tell, who are you? But still, Rajul had a bigger standing than anything less. So 40 is an interesting juncture where they actually recognize at least he's become a man. He's, be, he's become of age, yeah. as they would say in English. So it's interesting that. But here, now, interesting, that the Prophet Sallallahu comes back to his wife, not just for comfort, as we would perhaps go to our home, but no, it doesn't end there. He says, Zambiluni, Zambiluni, yes, cover me up. And he's shaking stuff and he says, right, wife, I'm off now to see some elders, some wise prophets, yeah, from my community. Men, of course. What do women know? Nothing. You can imagine what they were thinking at that time. What do women know? On your back, you know, we sell them, buy them, we abuse them, use them as we want. That's what the society was. Rasulullah saw some not like that even then, brothers and sisters. Yeah. And the position of woman in Islam. Just go back to this story to be enough for, to show you what the position of woman should be really in Islam and how much has been fogged and, uh, and dust covered after that. I tell you, so the Prophet Sallallahu when he finally stops shaking, etc., he seeks her advice, radiallahu anha, his wife's advice. Not because she was now 55 and he married her when, he was four, when she was 40 and she's older. Don't use those excuses. They don't work. Just because it was his wife, his partner. He didn't look down on women that they didn't have any clue, yeah, or they were less in their understanding. He's asking for her advice. And he's saying, I'm afraid for myself, the Prophet said. Sallallahu alayhi wa He said, I'm afraid for myself. So he came round. And she asked him, why? What happened? And he, and, he, and he shared the story of what happened in the cave. And Khadija radiallahu anha, she said, Kella, when he said, I'm afraid for myself, I don't know what's happening to me. You know? In other words, he was implying maybe Allah's punishing me or something's, you know, happening to me to to um, damage me. Kalla, la kalla, no, no way. Abshir, instead receive glad tidings for Wallahi. So she's glad tidings. You should be looked by God, by Allah. La yukhzi, la Allahu abada. Allah will never humiliate you. Allah will never humiliate somebody like you. She says, because you're the one who keeps the, the blood ties. You help always the poor and the destitute. Yeah? You speak the truth always. This is his qualities coming out uh, from his wife. You honor the guest and you assist always those in need. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Kella. No, it's not going to happen to you. I don't believe that that's going to happen. Yeah, but I believe instead what's happening. So 
Now, at Khadija herself, radiallahu anha, decides to take him to her, to her cousin, Waraka. Waraka I mentioned to you before as well. Everybody knows about Waraka. Waraka bin, uh, 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 bin Nawfal. And Waraka bin Nawfal is a Christian. So she, she says, look, listen to the story here. You know, advice is asking. So the Prophet starts to mention the story to Waraka. What does Waraka say? Remember what I said, those who know from their own scriptures? So Waraka said when he heard the story, he says, ah, this is the Namus. Meaning this is Gabriel or some, uh, some Arab language that said, this is the message that came to those before you. I wish I was young to be present and be with you the day that your people throw you out. What? They're going to throw me out? She said, of course. Nobody ever came with a message like this before. And the people didn't uh, uh, do what they're going to do to you. Yeah. Alas. Alas, he said, uh, uh, I wish I, I would be there the day they, uh, they, they throw you out. So I would support you. So I would support you. And he died soon after that. So historians don't mention about the Islam of Waraka. Majority think that he died a Christian, etc. But the reality is from an authentic statement of the Prophet Sallallahu He said, I saw Waraka in one of the paradises, etc. I mean, you can see from his words. What is he saying? Yeah, he's not saying, oh, you, you know, you're a cuckoo. Uh, you know, or yeah, maybe it was some sort of jinn. I can't be bothered. You know, he's saying, oh, I, I wish I was younger. I would not wish I was younger so I can have a watch and a laugh. No, I wish I was younger. I, I would support you. That's his iman. <laughs> yeah. And why the Prophet some confirmed that. So the best story is about what I have been known for in Jannah. Subhanallah. Isn't it? Um... So now this is more clarity for Khadija, what she already believed, radiallahu anha. Yeah. And the first person to believe in Islam, Khadija. You see, see the station, not a man, but a woman and his wife. And as some uh, historian said quite rightly, you know, don't think this is weak because, oh, well, it's his wife, isn't it? She's obviously going to believe in him. No, 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 it'd be the opposite. It's the opposite. Because out there, you can get away with all sorts of honor and respect and people don't know the truth about you until the most intimate person knows about you when you go home. So out there, oh, you might be a big sheikh or a big teacher out there or a big boss of a company in here. You're just my husband. Watch it. I, I know all your secrets and what you're about, what your weaknesses are. So if the least likely person to accept somebody as a prophet is the one living inside. Because out there, you get away with all sorts. Yeah, conjurings of all sorts, like people go around doing nowadays even. People become saints overnight, you know, suddenly. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, her accepting Rasulullah is yeah, the truthfulness of Rasulullah And he used to mention that for the rest of his life. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. How much... She comforted him, how she cared for him, and how when everybody else around rejected him, she believed in him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As mentioned by Aisha, radiallahu anha. Um, just reminds me that of the story that George Bernard Shaw, actually, uh, who writes about the prophethood, prophet, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. And he's not a believer, but... Uh, He's, he says one of the signs of the truthfulness of this man, Muhammad وسلم, is when his young wife Aisha in later days used to say to him, and this is also in authentic hadith, she used to say to have a go at Khadija and otherwise because she wanted to raise herself in, in his eyes to get his attention. He used to say, I used to get jealous. Aisha Razar says it herself, I used to get jealous. So at one time I said to him, which is better? To graze your animals in a field where other people have already grazed or to go to a fresh field <laughs> where nobody has grazed before. She's talking about her virginity and Khadija uh, and she was really having a go more than anybody at her. Because we have from 
uh, his devotees also come to understand. She had been married twice before, and her husband had died. Okay? So the Prophet said, No, I said, he, he, he told her off. He said, No. That Khadija and that's when he mentions uh, her, her station with her, how much he loved her, sallallahu alayhi wa and how when nobody else believed in her, how she supported and believed in her, and they never forgot. They always used to mention it, which used to irk uh, Umm al-Mu'mineen Aisha and she accepts that. So when George Bernard saw it, he, saw, he says, look, this man was always truthful. Any other man would have just to appease his present wife, because the other one's already gone, he would have said, oh, it's all right, no, you're most loving to me and everything, it's all right. Yeah, you're right. He didn't say that. He said what needed to be said, which was the truth. So this is so he uses this as a sign of the truthfulness. Interesting, isn't it? Uh, how non-Muslim he, he, he looks at that. He says, hey, this is a sign of his truthfulness, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anyway, so uh, we stop here at after Waraka bin Nawfal and the uh, uh, Iman of Khadija radhiallahu anha. And we'll carry on from there, inshallah, next time. Uh, I'll call you this, and 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 I'll call you this, and